Okay, class, so this is going to be the video directions for completing uh, two of the parts for the angle wheel assembly, specifically the wheel itself and the connecting rod. Um, these are a little bit more complex parts, so I want to kind of go through those so you can get these two done. Um, and then we'll do another video clip for the other two pieces before doing the third clip for the assembly. So to get to these parts, um, obviously I want to come to my home page. And once you log into Schoology and get to your home page, and scroll down to this main front view here, uh, looking for the assemblies folder. If you left click on that assemblies folder, you're gonna find everything we've been doing within this folder. And are right in the order we've done them. So we've done the universal join at the beginning, <coughs> excuse me, chain link assembly, linkage assembly. We just finished the slider assembly last class. And now we're gonna be working on its angle wheel assembly. If you click on this, you'll go to a new folder and you'll see all the pieces in there, including a set of written directions for you if the video is not helping you. What I wanna focus on today is the wheel component and the connecting rod. So I'm gonna left click on that. And it's gonna bring me to this window. Now for me personally, that's too small. I can't see it. So what I want you to do, or my preference is to do a download and open it in Adobe Acrobat. So that way I can get it to become full screen. So this is what we're going to create. I'm going to start off today with the connecting rod first. Now my plan of action, and what's really important with this one, I'm going to kind of blow up in this lower left-hand corner, the right-hand corner, excuse me. What's really important to understand with this is looking at these three views, we've got to understand that this hole in this main circle here is not perfectly um, straight through. If you look carefully, the inside of this hole is actually domed. And that's very, very critical because this dome piece is going to have to fit on this ball in our assembly. And the problem is, if you make this a straight hole and try to do the assembly, the assembly will not work for any reason, just because this hole cannot match up with that ball. So in order for us to do this, we're actually going to have to do a revolve here for the first part of this. Now, we can do a couple things. We can actually also do a revolve cut. We haven't done that yet, so we're going to stick with what we know, which is the revolve. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to start off this part off the, uh, off the right plane. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is this is like a right side view. So here is my right side looking in. Now, if you look carefully, this is basically a cut view called a section showing the, uh, the view looking in from the right. Now, what I'm going to focus in on, again, blowing up on this, I am going to focus in on this upper half of this section view. And so I'm going to start on the right plane, create this sketch you see right here, and then revolve it around a center line we'll put right in the middle. Once we have that, I'm then going to go off my right side plane here. I'm going to make a new plane 150 millimeters away, draw a circle, and extrude up to next. Okay, so let's put this plane into action. So I get my SOLIDWORKS up and running. Hopefully you got yours up and running too. As it loads up here, we're going to go ahead and make sure we know what units we're drawing in. And in this case, we should know we're in metric because we see it right here in our drawing. So we'll start with a metric part on the right plane as soon as SOLIDWORKS boots up. Now, SOLIDWORKS now booted up. I'm going to go ahead and go to the top of my screen and do a File New. And under my SOLIDWORKS Templates tab, I'm going to hit the metric part. I'm going to hit OK. SOLIDWORKS will give me now my drawing area, and here is my design tree to the left. So I'm going to start with, as I'm going to go to my right plane here, I'm going to do a new sketch on the right plane. Notice the right plane automatically goes normal to the screen. Now the first thing I want to do is I need to create a center line that's going to go across my origin. Now this center line, we don't need a dimension. All we're using this for is just basically the line we're going to spin our part or our sketch around. So what I'm going to take next is a line tool, and starting to the left side of my origin above the construction line, I'm going to left click and pull straight up, <clears throat> pull over to my right, pull straight down, I'm going to hit escape. Now I'd like to go ahead and put an arc in here, but I'm going to use an arc called a three-point arc. Now again, remember three points means three clicks on the mouse. So my first click is going to be on this left end point. My second click will be on the right endpoint. 
with my third click kind of ideally making a small little arc. And what I need to do, and this is very critical, <clears throat> excuse me, if we go back to our drawing, you'll notice the center of this arc is right here at this origin point. So I need the first thing I need to do here is go in and make a relationship between that center point of my arc and this origin right here. So holding my control key, I'm going to take that center point, left click, and the origin left click, and I'm going to make them coincident. So now this center shares the origin. I'm going to turn on my Smart Dimension tool now and dimension this radius to 10. Now going back in, I'm going to add in some other measurements. So looking back at my drawing, this back line will be 10. From the center line to the top will be 20. So I'll go back to this and dimension this top line to 10. And then from here to here will be 20. Now you'll notice this doesn't want <clears throat> look right. The reason being is I got to make this left side line and this right side line equal to each other. So I'm going to hit my control key, left click on the left line, left click on the right line, and make the two equal. As soon as you've done that, you'll notice that your sketch has become fully defined and it's centered on the origin. Now once you have it fully defined, we're going to go to our feature toolbar and hit the word uh, revolve boss base. And it's going to rotate around. Now, if you do not see this right now as a revolve, in the first box, it needs the axis of revolution. The axis of revolution is where we want this, this sketch to spin around. So you're going to pick that line that you drew earlier, called the construction line. Once you see the silhouette of what it's supposed to look like, go ahead and hit your check mark. And now there is the beginning of our part. If you look carefully and highlight this, you'll notice this is now domed inside. It should look like kind of like a ring. Okay, at this point, I'm going to come to my material now to the left of my design tree, and we are going to add an AISI 1020 steel. So I'm going to go to, oops, edit, uh, let's see, oops, not plain carbon, sorry, edit. I'm going to go to AISI 1020 steel, apply, and close. Now at this point, <clears throat> there is my ring I'm looking at here in my drawing. Okay, so there is this piece right here. So now what I need to do is add this front piece on. To do that, I'm actually going to have to take my right plane and copy it way out here at 150 millimeters. Now there's a shortcut to doing this. First, I'm going to turn on my right plane by left clicking on it. And then what I'm going to do is use my control key and a left click of my mouse button on top of the plane left click and hold and pull out towards your right and what you're going to notice is a property manager to the left comes on allowing us to manipulate what this plane is going to do where i want you to go is where it says d1 or di offset distance i want to type in 150 millimeters enter so what has happened here is i've made a duplicate plane that's duplicate to the right plane and I've moved that new duplicate 150 millimeters away from the center of this circle. Once you have that, hit your green check mark. You're going to see now a plane one that is currently ready to be drawn on. <clears throat> if yours is orange, left click on it so it turns light blue. Go up to the word sketch, do a space bar and a normal two, and turn on your circle tool. Attach your circle to the origin. Turn on your smart dimension and dimension your circle to 10 millimeters. I'm going to go to my isometric view so you can kind of see what's going on here. You see now this circle's way out in space. So now what I want to do is extrude this circle up to this surface here. So I'm going to go to Features, Extruded Boss Base. Now, as you can see, mine currently is going the wrong direction. So I'm going to go up here where it says Blind and reverse the direction and change it from blind to up to next. And what you'll see is now it's gonna reach out here. What's the most important though, is that it will blend itself around the rounded surface. This is critical if you wanna get your mask correct. Now with that already there, I just have to hit my check mark. I'm gonna highlight the plane over here to my left in the design tree. 
with a left click. And I'm going to hit the little eyeball here that says hide. And now my part is done. However, I want to go ahead and add that green color. I, I like in my assemblies to put parts in color so it makes things a lot easier to see. So I'm going to add this seafoam green on there. So to do that, I go to the top of my design tree and right click on the part, left click on the beach ball, left click on the silver ball, and I'm going to add a simple green color right here. And I don't care what color you go with, I'll go with the second pale green. I'm going to hit my check mark. And now I'm going to do a file save as. And I want to save this to my H drive. But I'm going to save this right now to my desktop because I don't have much space in my H drive. So I'm going to save this with all caps, connecting rod, my last name. And I'm going to say save. Now, I'm going to go to my mass properties and hit evaluate. And I get a mass properties of 157.28 grams. As soon as you have this number written down, or you can print the mass properties, go ahead and close out the mass property sheet, double check by hitting save, and get ready to start a new part. Now with the connecting rod done, I would like to go ahead now and start working on the wheel. So I'm gonna look over here, and let's create a plan of what we're gonna do with this wheel component. Okay, so if you're looking carefully and looking at your isometric, looking in this direction, this is my right side plane over here. So what I'm gonna start with is a right side plane. I'm gonna draw two circles, one that's 110 and another that is 20. I'm then gonna extrude it out five millimeters. And the way I can tell that is right up here in a section view. 35 minus 30 is five. That is the thickness of this wheel. Then what I'm gonna do is rotate it around and hit the back side of this. And I'm gonna draw on this peg first. And then what we'll do is attach to the peg this ball. This ball will be done with a revolve, just like we did with the tool or with the uh, connecting rod right before it. So with that said, let's put our plan into action. So now what I'm gonna do is do a file new, metric, and okay. I'm gonna start on the right plane with a new sketch starting with two circles, both connected to the origin, left click and pull, smart dimension, the big circle to 110 millimeters, and the small circle to 20. Now with that done, I'm gonna to go to my features toolbar, extrude boss base, and I'm gonna type a blind five millimeters, and check. Now I'm going to go back and see what the material is. <clears throat> it shows me a manganese bronze, which we should know now is under copper alloys. So I'm going to right click my material, edit material, minimize my steel, and expand my copper alloys. In alphabetical order, I'm looking for a manganese bronze. I will apply and then close the material box. So there is the initial disc right there. Now what I want to do is I want to rotate this with my mouse button, left click on the back side, start a new sketch, and do a space bar, normal to. I'm going to start by drawing a small circle on this back side with a diameter of five millimeters. So I'm going to take and add a five millimeter dimension on here. <clears throat> it's going to be a 50 millimeter distance between the origin and the center of that small five millimeter circle, five zero. And then I'm gonna add a relationship between the center of this small circle and the origin down below, a relationship of vertical. Now you'll see that we're fully defined. And so now what I'll do is rotate a little bit with my middle mouse button so you can see this. We are gonna go through and actually gonna go ahead and we are gonna extrude this a full 30 millimeters. So we're gonna put the end of the peg right in the middle of this ball. So going back in here, I'm gonna do a features, extruded boss space, and we are gonna extrude this at 30 millimeters. Hit my check mark. What I'm gonna do now is put this at the end point. I'm gonna start a new sketch, do a space bar and a normal two. 
I'm going to start this one by putting a circle right in the middle. So I'm going to draw a large circle. And then I'm going to take my line tool and from quadrant to quadrant, escape, I'm going to draw a line. Trim entities, I'll trim the left side of this. And then I'm going to smart dimension this arc to a radius of 10. Now with that done, I'm going to go to my feature toolbar and hit my revolve boss base. My axis of revolution will be this vertical line of the 10 radius um, arc here. And now what you'll notice is there is the ball. Hit your check mark, space bar, bar isometric, and now there is your finished part. I'm going to go ahead to the part two at the top of the design tree, right click and edit my, or my color by hitting the beach ball, clicking on this pink ball, and go ahead and add in this really bright pink. I'm going to go with this one, I'm a little lighter, and hit my check mark. Okay, the mass properties, actually what I'll do first is save this, so I'll do a save as. I'm going to call this wheel component, underscore my last name, and hit save. Check the mass. I'm going to go to evaluate and mass properties. I get a 419.40 grams. You can go ahead and print the mass properties now and take it back to your desk. As soon as you've done that, go ahead and close your mass properties page. Okay, so now we finished both parts that we need for the drawing. So I'm going to go back, look at the drawing, and we want to create the same drawing. So what we're going to be doing is open up a, G, or a GHS B metric border. And we'll go ahead and start with this upper view here, get all the views in, including the section view, go back over that, come over here and do a front top right side isometric here, and then we'll also do a section view <clears throat> to show that dome cut. We'll finish off by putting the title block, then you'll print and turn this in. So going into my SOLIDWORKS, I'll start off by going File New, GHSB Metric, OK. F key to center up, and I'll start by double clicking my wheel component. I'll double click, and I'm gonna start with a front view right here. I'm gonna make sure my hidden lines are on, and I have a preview. I want the scale to be one to two for both of these parts. Now, this is a tricky one, because I, a lot of kids will just click um, a front view and right side view, and then they'll go to the isometric. But we actually can get all of our views, except for one, with with this one view here. So this is my front. I'm gonna left click and pull to my left. That is the left side or back view. Come back over and pull to your right. This is the right side view. Then I'm gonna pull up at a diagonal to get my isometric. We are not using a top view here. Now I'm gonna come back to my top view or my isometric, excuse me, and add color. And then I'm gonna highlight any black lines in there and delete them out. I'm going to delete this line right here. And now what I want to do is I need to do a cut so I can see this view right here. And if you notice, this is the cut I'm talking about. That's called a section view. You'll notice that the line for the hex, uh, section view is horizontal. So we're going to do a horizontal section cut. So going back to SOLIDWORKS, under my View Layout tab, I hit the word Section View. Now the default is a vertical cut. The one next to it is my horizontal. So I'm gonna turn that one on and then blow up so you can see this. I'm just gonna attach anywhere on this line. Okay, I can even attach the center of that circle. I'm gonna left click, hit my green check mark, and pull straight up, left click. Now you'll notice my letters are incorrect. So I'll go to the left here, highlight that letter B, and with a caps lock on, type a letter A, check mark. Okay, so now I have all of my views in place. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and add my other part in here, and then we'll add on our notes and our dimensions. So going back over here to my View Layout tab, hit the word Model View, double-click Connecting Rod. Again, we're going to work from our front view, preview, hidden lines on, Scale one to two. I'm going to come over here to my right side corner, put my front view in, top view, 
right side, isometric, escape. Pull these over a little bit more to create some space. And now I'm going to come up here and add in my color. Get rid of any extra black lines. Now, with that done, I am going to go back and I need to make another section view cut. So if I look at this one and I look at this line BB, you should notice that the section cut line is vertical. So when I go in to choose, I'm going to choose the vertical cut, put it in the center of the circle, and then we'll pull to our right. So I'm going to go back to my View Layout tab, Section View, Vertical Section Line, and I'm going to take and attach that right to the center of the circle. And hit my green check mark and pull to the right. I'm going to change this letter C to a letter B and hit my check mark. So now I have all my views on the paper. So next thing I want to do is start adding dimensions. So I'm going to go to my annotation tab, go to the word model items. I'm going to go here to entire model, import it into all views, and hit my check mark. Now, this is not done by any means. What it does do is give me at least a start that I can start playing around with. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the, actually take this R10, and using my shift key, I'm going to drag the R10 up above. Uh, maybe it won't let me do it. So in this case, I'll just delete that off of there along with this 20. Okay, now this 50, I'm going to shift key and drag that over to this other view. Okay, the 50 goes on this view, which requires me to pull this over a little bit more. Okay, this view goes over a little bit more. Okay, and this view will go a little bit more. All right, that's a dimer 50. Now I got to add the other two. I need to add a 110 here, a 20, and in the dimension box or the text box over here to the left, through. So this view is complete. Okay, this view, there's nothing on it, nor is there anything on this view here. So now I got to go up to this view. I see my 30. Get rid of this 110. Take the 5 out here. Get rid of this 5 here. I will then add on from this circle here to the back edge. A distance of 35. Pull this in a little bit tighter. Pull this in a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to click on this right here to get my R10. What I'm going to do also is add a center mark to this ball. Check mark. Click on this and flip the arrow to the inside. So now looking at that, I should have all the same dimensions as I do up here. Okay, so this one is complete. Section AA will stay right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and add in my notes. So I'm going to use my PDF file I've given you and highlight this title and do a control C for copy. I'm going to come over here and turn on my note tool and put in the note tool right below this wheel component. I'm going to do a control V. I'm going to highlight all this to make sure my font size is 12. I'm going to make sure everything's centered. I also want to make sure this top line is bold and underlined. At this point, you're going to double click these and you're going to type in the number that is on your mass proper sheet for the wheel component. Do not leave them as X's. When you're done typing that in, click outside and hit escape. So this set of views is now done. Working my way over here. Okay, this 150 needs to be on this view. So I'm going to hold my shift key, left click and hold, and drag it down to this view here. Same with the 10, it belongs over here. So shift key, left click and, oops, control Z that, sorry. <clears throat> okay, got to make sure this one wasn't highlighted. Highlight, <clears throat> shift key, left click and drag to the front over here. Try it one more time. And pull this out. That looks good. Okay, moving over, section BB will be right here. The 20 looks good. This 10 I'll put right here, but I'll also flip this arrow to the inside. 
I will then also add in a center mark to this. I get my R10, my R20. Let me see, this is going to be an R20, but I'll get rid of the R and just make it 20. From the top to the bottom, be a diamond or 40. Let's see what else I got there. R10, I need to add a 5, and then that's it. This one will be done. So I'm going to add in a 5. The 5 is going to be from that center line to this edge. I'll pull the 5, make that a 10, and we're good. Pull this up a little higher, pull this up a little higher, and that takes care of this. Go to my PDF file. I'm now going to go ahead and copy this note. Control C. <clears throat> Come on over here and turn on my note tool and do a Control V. Center that up. Highlight this top line, make it bold and underlined. Double check or double click your X's. Enter in the number that you have on your mass property sheet, and then click outside. Hit escape. Okay, so this view is now done, making this drawing completely done. If you need to move some things around, slide things over, at this time, go ahead and take care of that. Move this maybe a little bit further over, this a little bit more, give myself a little bit more spacing. that looks good. Okay, don't forget the key elements, the title block. All right, right here we're going to make it page 303, wheel component and connecting rod, and then we'll get all the other information in there. So again, I'm just going to double click on this one, make it three of three, double click the title, wheel component, and connecting rod. Okay, scale is going to be one to two. Draw by your first initial last name. Go ahead and center that up a little bit by just dragging it over. That's good. Today's date, 020520. Class period, and then check by me, R Combs. As soon as you have this done, let's go ahead and do a quick save. So, file save as, name wheel component and connecting rod, and hit save. Save all. If it ever asks, definitely save everything. At this point, go ahead and print, fold in half, and put it into the collection box. Come back to your desk and go ahead and get yourself set up. We're going to go ahead and do the next two parts before we get the assembly done. Okay, use this video to your advantage. There's also the directions that are printed onto the School G page if you are better at step-by-step -step directions versus the video. Otherwise, use this, use this video to your advantage. Use it to back up, forward, repeat, whatever you need to do. Otherwise, good luck. This is due at the end of the period.